Independence Day, Uzbekistan, and the state is showing off its military might. It's 10 years since the Soviet Union collapsed, leaving Uzbekistan on its own in a dangerous region. Some feared it would end up like its neighbour Afghanistan, falling into chaos and religious extremism. But Uzbekistan's secular state hasn't just survived, it's grown stronger every year. It has crushed its Islamic opponents, throwing thousands into jail. Its military is now the most powerful in Central Asia, and its commander-in-chief, Islam Karimov, the region's undisputed strongman. <laughs> Ten years ago, Karimov was the Communist Party boss. Since independence, he's been Uzbekistan's first and only president. Many of his 25 million people see him as the nation's saviour, defending it from fundamentalists and Islamic terror. <laughs> But some see a darker side behind the colour and celebration. They believe independence has brought a new kind of repression, unspeakable state crimes dressed up as a war on terrorism. I was called late in the night to go to the home of a young man who was the son of an imam, the son of a religious leader at a mosque. And he had been arrested for possession of a leaflet, possession of literature about religion. And I was called to his home to view his body after he was tortured to death in prison. And that is one of the sobering sights I've, most sobering sights I've ever seen. And uh, unfortunately, that story is repeated over and again in Uzbekistan. For more than a century, great powers have seen Uzbekistan as a front line between civilization and barbarity. Tsarist Russia built a mighty fort on Uzbekistan's southern border. Its guns pointed across the Amudarya River to Afghanistan. The Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan from here to prevent Islamic militancy taking hold on its southern frontier. Since independence, Uzbekistan has been fighting its own war, battling raids by Islamic insurgents from the self-styled IMU, the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. The government accuses it of widespread terrorism. Now America is offering to join Uzbekistan's war, linking the IMU to Osama bin Laden. This group and its leader, a person named Osama bin Laden, are linked to many other organizations in different countries, including the Egyptian Islamic Jihad and the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. But not everyone welcomes America's involvement in Uzbekistan's campaign. Acacia Shield spent four years in Uzbekistan as a researcher for the international monitoring group Human Rights Watch. What Uzbekistan has been engaged in for the past four years has not been a war on terrorism, but rather a very brutal campaign against its own people, peaceful, devout Muslims who practice their faith outside state controls. These are not people who have been accused of possessing arms or engaging in any violence. So to justify that crackdown in the name of countering terrorism or to use the tragedy in New York to justify that uh, really doesn't wash. Officially, Uzbekistan guarantees religious freedom. 
Since the communist ban on religion was lifted, thousands of mosques have been built. Hundreds of Islamic colleges called madrasas have been opened. But Islam's growth has been very much on the government's terms. Today, registered mosques are required to be absolutely loyal to the state. Hamidullah is the imam at one of the largest mosques in the capital, Tashkent. He's careful to praise both God and the president. Islam Karim, President Dini brother Ms. Bolub, Mormon Musulman Larchun, Naha, Tekata, Hamfor, Likoliatler, Judakata Sharoit, Lariat, Tiberiatler. Since 1997, the government has closed down hundreds of mosques for refusing to tow the government line. Muslims belonging to unregistered organizations have been imprisoned. Human Rights Watch estimates more than 4,000 devout Muslims are in jail for offences as slight as reading the Koran in their homes. Thousands and thousands of people have been caught up in these sweeps and it's not unusual to see entire families decimated by this crackdown. The government calls the jailed Muslims Wahhabists, followers of Saudi Arabia's strict Islamic sect. It's code for fundamentalist, and traditional mosques wholeheartedly support the government's campaign. And bloodshed blamed on fundamentalists has given the government every excuse to continue the crackdown. On February 16th, 1999, a series of terrorist bombings in Tashkent killed 16 people and seriously wounded 128. The explosions had targeted government offices, including the cabinet meeting room. But as this government video repeatedly stressed, the victims were innocent civilians. Why? Why did they kill my husband, my father, my son, my daughter? Why them? Who did this? Why? In the midst of danger, President Islam Karimov visited the explosion sites. He expressed condolences to the families of the deceased and called upon the population to keep unity and tranquility. While no group claimed responsibility, the government was quick to use the carnage to intensify a crackdown on alleged Islamic militants. Hundreds were rounded up. Suspects were shown confessing to organizing the bombings for the IMU as a prelude to an armed uprising. We have prepared two tons of explosives. The main goal was to blow up the president. The main purpose of those present was to create condition for jihad ideology. There's no doubt the government had to respond forcefully to such a devastating crime. But there's also little doubt the president has used the spectre of Wahhabists to crack down on any opposition, real, potential or imagined. He has brought traditional Islam under tight state control and his KGB has harassed, kidnapped, imprisoned, some say even murdered, his democratic opponents. Вот в 1999 августа, 20-й ночи, КГБ взорвали Михаил Арцинов has been a target of the secret police ever since Karimov came to power. 
Но почему вы считаете, что КГБ это сделали? Ну, очевидно, в первую очередь запугать меня, мы так, так, потому что мы тогда много писали, критиковали против кому, властей выступали. Вот. Ну, Ардзинов а... runs an Uzbek human rights foundation, stubbornly persevering against constant harassment. Despite being a pacifist and an atheist, he too was arrested and bashed in the crackdown that followed the bombings. Наверное, они нам сейчас угрожают тоже. Это так опасно, Билат. Опасно, опасно, да. Почему вы продолжаете? Ну и мы давно уже, это наши принципы, это наши, мы видим, что народ страдает, народ, нету свободы. Это наше убеждение. Я старый диссидент, я 73 -го года, и мы просто по своим принципам, по своим убеждениям, Most of his colleagues have spent long stretches in jail. Professor Taradin Aripov was sentenced to 10 years after criticizing Karimov. Mahmouba Kasumova was imprisoned for 18 months after a 15-minute trial. She was released after appeals from the then US Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright. Another of their colleagues died in police custody two months ago. Так что и у нас э, перспективы у нас мрачные, пока будет такой режим личной власти авторитарного Каримова, но здесь очень перспективы мрачные, мы так думаем. Но мы боремся, мы будем бороться. Адзинов и his friends are virtually all that's left of an opposition. As well as banning Islamic parties, Karimov has banned all democratic groups opposed to his rule. Now, when he enters parliament, he's assured of universal applause, just like in the old days when the Communist Party ruled all. But the regime insists it is moving toward democracy. In the last presidential elections, President Karimov even organized a candidate to run against him. His choice was the head of his old Communist Party, now renamed the National Democratic Party. Abdullah Fiz Jalalov took to his assigned role with gusto, traveling the country in a vigorous election campaign in which he urged people to vote for Garimov. Голосовал за ныне действующего президента. Ты? Да. No. Потому что я считал свой голос не имеющим решающего значения. Не личные противники. Да, но вы а... были противник. Нет, я был альтернативный кандидат. Ah, я был соперник, но личный, не личный противник. Вот так. It is a sham democracy in which Karimov wins every time. The system simply doesn't allow any credible alternative. The president's face smiles down from billboards across the country. A tightly controlled media gives him unstinting praise. But such is the fear of Islamic extremism, many are prepared to trade democracy for stability. Vahob, Dilya and Zioda are students at Tashkent's Foreign Language University. We should have like some strict rules here to stop those things. To stop terrorism? Yeah, and um, among youth. Society in Uzbekistan will need some more years to achieve the, the level of democracy process. like uh, in other some developed, well-developed countries. Does, does that worry you here, uh, that, that if you had perhaps more freedom, it may result in more fundamentalism. I, I want it to be separate. For example, I don't want religion to disturb the civilization. I don't want it to happen. But outside Tashkent, discontent with the regime is growing. The Fergana Valley is Uzbekistan's rural heartland. Once a center of the Soviet Union's cotton industry, it's now a place of desperate poverty. The collapse of the USSR wrecked the system of collective farms that at least guaranteed people's livelihood. The government has long seen the valley as a breeding ground for fundamentalism. 
But while the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan has its roots here, Human Rights Watch doubts it has strong support. I know that there are people based outside of Uzbekistan who call themselves the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, who have stated that their goal is to overthrow the Karimov government. That has not been the stated goal of religious Muslims inside Uzbekistan. But the Fagana Valley has been a major target of the government's crackdown. People have been arrested and jailed for praying in small groups or in unregistered mosques, or simply for being denounced as Wahhabists. <laughs> Hamid Ala Moendino is coming to terms with the loss of almost his entire family. Police arrested his wife, his three sons, his wife's brother and his nephew. All have been sentenced to long prison terms. His wife won't be released for another 12 years. His grandson Bilud won't see his father for another 10 years. Hamid Allah's friend Hakim is similarly perplexed. One night, 20 police arrived at his house and dragged away his two sons after a business rival claimed they were Wahhabists. One was given a lengthy prison term, but his son Nazun was eventually released after police beatings left him brain damaged. The arrests have spread fear throughout the Fagana Valley, driving Islamic worship underground. With no avenue for protest or redress, the crackdowns have fueled resentment against Karimov's regime. Critics ask whether the repression has crushed revolutionary Islam or created it. И все знают и чувствуют наше мнение. Сейчас их более 10 тысяч. Их сажают, убивают, а количество увеличивается. Народ здесь, сам узбекский народ, эластичный, не такой крутой, как вот там в Иране или в другом месте. Спокойный, эластичный народ. И религия такая спокойная, если ее, конечно, не трогают. А если вот сейчас репрессируют, это, конечно, вызывает недовольство и опасность здесь. President Karimov can look back in satisfaction at 10 years of independence. He has survived the collapse of the Soviet superpower to become master of his own domain. All around him praise him, world leaders court him. And a grand coalition is joining his war. Thank you.